kids, it's time to do a life app where kids and grown-ups talk about what God does inside of us to change the world around us. We're talking about determination, which is sticking with something. So I thought I would try some activities to stick things out at home. I'm calling this sticking at home with sticky stuff. One thing I've seen a lot of people do that's sticky is these DIY hot glue gun crafts. You've all seen the mesmerizing footage of hot glue gun crafts. You want to look away, but it's like your eyes are stuck to the screen. come to stop watching and to start DIYing because we're talking about determination, deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. So today I'm going to start and finish a Mother's Day present for my mom. I'm going to make fabulous hot glue gun shoes, the best Mother's Day present ever, slippers, made entirely out of hot glue. As soon as the glue dries, she's gonna love it. She can shelter in place in style. So, on first appearances, this craft seemed to go well, but then it was like the time when the really rad rhinoceros ran out of raspberries, or that time when Sally was out of seashells, so now she sells sandwiches down by the seashore. What I'm trying to say is that I ran out of hot glue, and I've only completed one slipper. Also, I have another problem. These flip-flops... They're more flop than flip. What am I gonna do? Today is Mother's Day and I don't have a completed present. I can't make a whole other slipper with only one hot glue gun stick. How do I have determination now? I've got it. I'll take a pair of my mom's old slippers and I'll use this final hot glue gun stick to write a message of love on the bottom. It'll be an anti-skid glue embellishment. My mom will be held to the floor in grace and style by my love and hot glue. You could say that God does the same thing for us that I'm doing with these slippers. God will restore us in new ways. God never gives up on us. God is always determined to stick with us for the long haul and make sure that we come out better as a result, that we come out more whole with some spring in our step, with some pep in our, um, also our step. So remember, pink platypuses pick pink peonies and also that determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started just like God does with us. Flip-flops are more flop than flip. Flip-flops are more flop than flip. Flip-flops are more flop than flip. Yes! Welcome back to another fun Sunday at Faith Trek. What is something that you did this week that took some determination? Remember that determination is deciding to stick with something because it matters. So if you had something this week that maybe you really had to stick with it because you knew that at the end that it would have a good outcome or something that you just had to get through um, to keep going, what was that thing? 
if you have some folks around you, if you have a brother or sister, mom and dad, or grandma and grandpa, whoever is around you right now, why don't you share one thing that you were able to do this week that took some determination. You had to stick with it and keep going. And we're going to play a game that's all about determination. For this game, you're going to need two things. You're going to need a small ball, maybe like a bouncy ball or a ping pong ball if you have something like that. Um, and then you're going to need some like 10 pieces of something that would be kind of easy to pick up. So you could use beads, you like plastic kind of like larger beads, you could use um, like uh, playing pieces to a game, something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the ball and bounce it. Um, and you're going to be, first of all, you have to sit on the floor and take the ball and bounce it. And while you bounce the ball, you have to try to pick up one bead. So you bounce the ball, try to pick up one bead. And if you can do that, which is really hard to do, then you know what you do next you bounce the ball and you try to pick up two beads, okay? And so you have to bounce it, pick up a bead before the ball bounces again. Bounce it, pick up two beads before the ball bounces again. Let me show you what you what I mean by giving it a try myself. Okay, so for the game, here's what I've got, you guys. I've got some Silly Putty that actually bounces, so I'm gonna use that as my bouncy ball. And then I have this little bag of plastic farm animals. Here's, here's a horse. Here's a wolf. And then I've got some little piggies too. Doesn't matter what you use, but that's just, I thought you'd have some fun seeing that. So I think I'm gonna use the pigs because then they're the same color as my bouncy ball, which is kind of fun. Okay, I've got four pigs. This game is really hard, really hard. Okay, but I'm gonna show you down here, hopefully what I'm doing. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to bounce the ball. Ah! <laughs> bounce the ball, and then while it just is doing one bounce, you have to try to pick something up. I don't know, can you hold it with this hand? That's what I'm gonna try to do. So bounce, pick, <gasps> oh, I did it, I got one. Okay, I'm gonna put it back. Bounce. Ah! I didn't do it that time. Bounce. Pick. Whoa! Oh my goodness. All right. All right. Well, you guys, you guys try to play and see if you can do better than me, okay? I'll keep playing while um, you play, and we'll play together, and we'll listen to some music while we do it. All right. Have fun.
stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise. God, a robot we called Pokebot Bob broke again in the finals. Liam said he didn't think the new arms would work, and he was right. So far this year, we've lost the movement challenge. Spilled stuff on our notebook, had to change out the motor position three times, broke a base, fixed it, and then broke it again. Messed up the programming just before the second match, Changed controllers from me to Vance when I had to change out the wheels in an emergency because Liam was busy reprogramming. And then, the officials changed the course at the last minute. We got a warning on the inspection because we went over the limit on parts, so we had to take some stuff off. We came in... 14th. God, thanks for Pokebots. Actually, we had the greatest time. I'm so glad we stuck with it through everything. I can't wait until next year. Thanks again, Mason. This is the Bible memory verse for the month of May. It goes like this. Let us not become tired doing good at the right time bing, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up that's from Galatians 6 9 it's time to do our Bible book wrap and we are moving through the Old Testament. So let's recap what we've done so far. We've done Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 King, 2 King, then read 1 and 2 Chronicles. Okay, great. And here's what we're learning today. Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Let's try that again. Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Okay, let's try to do all of that together. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, then read 1 and 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Good job. All right, let's try it with the video. Best books of the best book. Cause all of God's songs have the best books. And all of God's acts have the best books. And all of God's loves in the best book. Yo, it's the V. I be a lead. Read the B. I be a lead. Know the V. I be a lead. God's word is the B. I be a lead. I read Genesis. Yes, and this is the better kids. Now it's Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judges, Ruth. First Samuel, second Samuel, first King, second Kings, and read first and second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. 
the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 41. The room was crowded. Over 100 followers of Jesus gathered, sat on the floor, or knelt to pray. Peter, always quick to take charge, may have led them. Lord, you told us to wait in Jerusalem. You promised to send your Holy Spirit. Now, just before, Jesus had gathered his closest friends at the Mount of Olives and instructed them to tell everyone about him, from Jerusalem to every nation on earth. But then, right before their eyes, he had been taken up to heaven. You've given us a huge job. We don't know how to do it when you're not here with us. So please, help us. The room stilled as everyone waited, even though they weren't exactly sure what they were waiting for. James and John may have been near a window. Getting windy out there. I'll just close the shutters. I don't think that sound is outside. Uh, uh, everyone stay calm. As the sound like wind rose even higher, a burst of light appeared in the center of the room. It flickered like a fireball breaking into individual flames. What on earth? I don't think it's from Earth. As the group watched transfixed, the flames separated and skimmed out until a tongue of fire stood over the head of each believer in the room. Is this? It must be. God's Holy Spirit. As the Spirit of God filled the room and the heart of each believer, something even more incredible happened. Soon, the believers realized what was going on. God has given us the power to speak other languages. Immediately, the believers went out to join the crowds who had gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Now, these Jews traveled to Jerusalem from many regions and countries where a variety of languages were spoken, so they were shocked to hear the believers talking about Jesus in words they could understand, and each believer responded in their own language. Aren't these people from Galilee? Yes, so how do we hear them in our own native languages? We've come from all over. I've met people here from Parthia, Mesopotamia, Asia, Egypt, Libya. But these Galileans are talking about God's wonders in our languages. What does it mean? I think it means they're a little loopy. Loopy? One fish short of a lunch, if you know what I mean. Peter heard the doubters in the crowd, so he gathered the rest of the disciples and made his way up to the very front. My fellow Jews, hey, people! Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. Long ago, God planned that Jesus would be handed over. You nailed him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. The crowd listened as the Holy Spirit gave Peter the words to say and helped them understand. Jesus has received the Holy Spirit from the Father. This is what God had promised. It is Jesus who has poured out what you now see and hear. God has made him both Lord and Messiah. Many people were deeply moved by the words Peter had spoken. So what do we do now? All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I... I want to be baptized. Me too. Me three. Then let's get started. That day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus and were baptized. With the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter and the disciples were already beginning the big job of telling every nation on earth about Jesus, even before they left Jerusalem. I love that that Bible story is all about determination. God had given his friends, the disciples, a huge job to do, to tell everyone in the whole world about God's love. We have big jobs to do too. And when we have those big jobs, we can remember that God's with us. God gives us what we need. God came to people in a special way through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit 
comes to us. The Holy Spirit is Jesus living inside your heart, giving you wisdom, giving you power, giving you times when you need to take a break and relax. The Holy Spirit is God's little whisper in your ear. The Holy Spirit is what helps you keep going, even when it's hard. I know the Holy Spirit helps me have some determination. I want to show you a picture um, in this storybook Bible called Growing in God's Love. I'm going to turn off my virtual background because it gets really, really funny when I have a book or something. And I want to show you the picture from this Bible story we just heard about Pentecost. Pentecost was when the Holy Spirit first came to people. Here we go. Okay. See, it says Pentecost, and you can see there that the friends of Jesus had fire on their heads because we know that was one of the ways that um, we could see the Holy Spirit at that time was it was um, a supernatural, like amazing experience where there were these little flames on top of people's heads, kind of like the burning bush in the Old Testament. And um, when the Holy Spirit came, they, the Holy Spirit helped the friends of Jesus to do a lot of things. And one of the cool things was they could speak different languages. And I think all the time, if I could have one wish from a genie, it really would be to all of a sudden be fluent in a different language. How cool would that be to get to talk to people? And some of you are learning languages and you know how hard it is to learn a second language how hard you have to work. Um, some of you might be more fluent in a second language. And you have that amazing gift of getting to communicate with people who don't know English, which is really, really cool. Um, so that was like another cool way that the Holy Spirit gave people what they need. Now the thing about the Holy Spirit is that when we pray and ask God for something, um, sometimes we feel like we don't get it. And God doesn't just like get us whatever we want. God gives us what we need. God gives us what we need, especially to keep going. So I want to pray for you today that you have what you need from the Holy Spirit, who is God, Jesus living inside your heart, to keep going in the ways that you need to keep going this week. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that we're growing in your love and that we have you, the Holy Spirit, in our lives, um, giving us everything we need to do what we need to do and to do it well and have determination to keep going. We pray for all the kids watching this video, God, that you would help us have what we need to keep going this week. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, bye. See you next week.